I was wondering, do you have like a steady kind of roster of artists that you're putting shows on, or is it just hey, we're doing, we need a, we need we need acts, and you start reaching out? Um, well, you know, we reach out to everyone. Um, I think we give everybody a fair shake. Whoever wants to be a part of it, we're not going to turn them away. Right. Um, but we do have uh, associated acts. Um, I think in back in the day in Yuma, there was a couple bands. One was called Screaming at Deaf Kids, Grave <laughs> Radio. Um, <laughs> yeah. What was the best band Screaming at Deaf Kids, yeah. This video is brought to you by HostGator. We'll hear more about them later. For now, let's get on to today's video. Welcome to Room 6, the channel dedicated to local music and the people that make it, including my guests. And my guests are part of a production company that I first got introduced to at Evil Pie down on Fremont Street as part of the Otis Julius show. Otis Julius has been on the channel. It was a great interview. But I also have interviewed Baljeet from that show and Kurian. It was just an awesome show, and, and really, uh, we've had a good time. So... Making a name for themselves, putting on street level or pop up house shows, <laughs> they're basically no show is too weird, <laughs> and their Instagram posts have stayed stuck at six six six. Please welcome to the channel, Scumbags Productions. Say hi, guys. What's going on? Wolfpack. Woohoo! Welcome. Cheers. Clink and clunk. And. If you want to be like them and be featured on the channel, whether reviewed, interviewed, or both, hit me up using my email address or click the Room 6 social media link down in the description. That's also where you'll find what else I'm up to online and ways you can support the channel should you so desire. Thanks. So right off the bat, I have to ask, why the name and why is it Scumbags Productions? Well, Scumbags is a group that started in Yuma, Arizona. Uh, just with a bunch of high school kids that used to get fucked up all the time. And, you know, eventually it ended up becoming a punk punk rock group where we were booking shows like, how could we drink professionally? <laughs> you know? Yeah. We'd get fucked up all the time anyway. So it's like, how can we do this and get paid for it? <laughs> right. You know? um, I, I did notice that, was it intentional that you went scumbags yes. productions? Because yeah. there's a lot of single scumbag productions out there. Is there? Yeah, well, there was more than one. And um, my my wife is is one of those people that it's like it's wrong. <laughs> only one of them should have an S on the end. There's right. only one. Yeah. There'll only ever be one. You yeah, know? there'll never be another. All right. So, uh, by the way, for those of you that don't know who Scumbags Productions are, thank you for watching. Appreciate you. Go ahead and introduce yourselves and tell them who you are and what you do. I'm Scumbag. Well, I'm chapter president, uh, Scumbags Las Vegas. Uh, my name's Widget. I'm chapter secretary of Scumbags Las Vegas and proprietor of Stone Spider Photography. All right. And I'm Josh. I'm the host. <laughs> <laughs> so, obviously, def definite, um, forgive me for saying it like this, definite biker gang type setup, right? The way you just introduced yourself. Uh, well, we don't ride motorcycles. Yes but... and no. It's a, it's a similar, like, uh, structure, like club structure. Mm-hmm. But again, nothing to do with motorcycles. No, no outlaw stuff. Uh, we're called scumbags basically because that's the way society sees us, anyway. So mm -hmm. we might as well embrace it. You know, lean just, into it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we're not out out here. You know, we're not wearing suits and making good decisions. You know, <laughs> <laughs> no, we're, like coming on the show. Hey. We're <laughs> a bunch of punk rock kids trying to keep the punk scene alive and thriving and safe for everybody to enjoy. Because we love it, you know. It's... Right on. So, how long has Scumbags Productions been a thing officially, like, putting on shows? How long has your name been on a flyer? Oh, man. Well, it was a, it was a thing before I was in the club. So, it had to have been maybe around, like, 2009, 2010, when the original members put it together. And they, I think I got in maybe around 2011, 2012. Oh, so this isn't your baby. No, no, I'm just the chapter president, but started in New Arizona. Okay. So, uh... I misunderstood completely, because I thought that you had found, like, this was your thing. No, no. Oh, uh, right on. Yeah, I started off as a prospect, you know? So, I, I earned my stripes, you know? I earned that patch and made it made it my own and really took off out here, you know? It really made 
a lot of strides and started getting really big bands and taking it to new levels that we've never seen before, further than we ever imagined. I was going to say that um, de- I, I mentioned in the intro kind of like the street level concerts and the, the, the house shows and you've, you've come up a bit, you know, there's been a bit of a glow up as they say. And um, I was wondering, do you have like a steady kind of roster of artists that you're putting shows on or is it just, hey, we're, we, need a, we, need, we need acts and you start reaching out? Um, well, you know, Both. we reach out to everyone. Um, I think we give everybody a fair shake. Whoever wants to be a part of it, we're not going to turn them away. Right. Um, but we do have uh, associated acts. Um, I think in back in the day in Yuma, there was a couple bands. One was called Screaming at Deaf Kids, Grave <laughs> Radio. Um, <laughs> yeah. What was the best band Screaming at Deaf Kids, yeah. <laughs> Flipping off blind kids. <laughs> That is cute. That is that is precious. All um, right. Uh, alleyway kids, you know, they were all the associated acts. So whenever, you know, we got together, you know, those were our friends. So we always work with them a lot. And here in Vegas, we have Terror Attack and Run Your Luck. They're our yeah. I see their name a lot. Yeah, they're members of Scumbags as well. So obviously, you know, we want to throw them a bone. Yeah, and the the thing is, if you don't, if you haven't been to a Scumbags show, it's not just metal, or it's not just this. Like I met him at. A rap show that they were putting on, and when I saw, I was like, "Hey, who's putting this on?" He said, "Scumbags." I was like, "It's an all what?" Because <laughs> because you hear the name and you don't think rap immediately, you know. Right. Mm-hmm. So if you had to sum up the philosophy of of how you put together a show, what, what would you say? I don't know. Well, let's give a tagline for Scumbags Productions. I don't know, man. I never really thought about that. Like, I guess no show too weird. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, we do punk shows, hip hop shows. Uh, I got a, we got a big rockabilly show coming up that I've put together. If I had a tagline, I would say, uh, "Don't tell me how to party." Nice. Yeah. That's that. Put that on a shirt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't, don't tell that, me how to party. One. Fuck you. You know. Uh, I like. Uh, no. Yeah, I, I can see it on a hat. Like, don't tell me how to party, and then a middle finger. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. I can dig it. <laughs> we can <laughs> dig it. Um. So it's it's been you've been doing shows for a minute, about ten years I'd say because I was doing okay. the Arizona. Then uh, I, I'm going to ask you a question that I normally ask uh, acts when they're on you know musical acts. Uh, no performance for this interview because uh, uh, they're not here in like as musicians. They're here as a production company, really. So, um, what is the one sh- if you do you have a show memory where you just you either can't believe that I can't believe this happened at one of our shows in a good way. Or things went like way off the rails or something. Oh man, well, I got a lot of stories. Let's, yeah, well, let's try to keep it to one. But it, it, let's say you're at a party and you're you're saying this one you would this one time and band came. No, you just, want to do you want to do a good story or a bad story? Yeah, it's up to you. Yeah, I'll throw it throw it in your court. Little column A, little column B. Yeah, okay. go for it. Oh, uh, we'll start with the good. Uh, Why? Tell me a story that would make me want to come to one of your shows. Yeah, uh, I think one of the the highlights I think was when we had a. Uh, who killed Spiky Jacket? And that was like a dream booking right there. I was like, I was so fucking proud that they wanted to work with me and everything. Mm-hmm. And um, we got that show going, and it was maybe the best show I think I've ever had. It was incredible, especially when you're meeting someone that's one of your heroes that got you into punk and all that stuff. And uh, I had another band on there that was playing after them, and they were a surf punk band called Dekaiju. And they didn't know who each other were. So. I, uh, Who Killed Spiky Jacket played their set and they kicked a lot of ass, right? A lot of people paid money to see them anyway. Right. But I told the singer, I was like, yeah, the next band, man, you're going to really enjoy it. You should check them out. And he's like, what kind of music is it? I was like, oh, surf punk. He's like, yeah, no. He's, obviously, it wasn't but his thing. From Japan. <laughs> no, they weren't from no. Japan. Oh, I thought you, oh, there was a Japanese band that played before them. Okay, okay. Middle, so, I misheard. Okay. That was the erections that you're thinking of. Uh, <laughs> that's a whole other beast. Right. But, uh, the kaiju came on, and they start doing their set, and I was like, "Just watch." And uh, they start playing, and little by little, starts getting more intense and more intense as the show goes on. They take their whole drum set down, put it in the middle, and set that shit on fire. And literally, the the drum set is ablaze while everyone's Jeez. around it in a circle, and they're playing on it. Was the venue owner there? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they were. Yeah. It was at the dive bar, and they it loved it. dive bar. Wow. The Look, guy wait. starts taking the pieces apart and handing the pieces of the drum set On to fire? Uh, it was already out of fire by then. Okay. <laughs> but he starts handing it to people, and uh, then they all start holding it up in the air, as high as they can. 
They're holding drums. They hold the drums up in the air, the snare, everything. Was, was, and the drummer. Was the rest of the band still playing? Yeah, they were still Okay. Playing. So they get everything up, right? Oh, the crowd is holding drum set. The guy stands on top of a chair, and they hold him up. Right. And so he's playing drums, standing on top of the crowd, looking down on the crowd. His head's about to hit the ceiling. Damn. <laughs> Tell me you got video or something. <laughs> yeah, actually. Yeah. That's there is amazing. Yeah, videos and photos. Where where are those? Are those like on uh, the website? You or? could see some of them on my Instagram, which is Stone Spider Photography. Uh, the others I just have in the archives right now. <laughs> yeah, they finally finished their set. They put everything down. They ha- they get all the guitar- their gear off, instruments, hand it to the crowd. The crowd just starts playing their shit. <laughs> they walk out. <laughs> <laughs> they walk out. That is it's the biggest flex ever. <laughs> and then as as everyone rushes outside, they're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. They rush outside, and these guys are setting the roof of their fucking van yeah, on fire. Climbed set up on ablaze. top of their van. And <laughs> set guitars on fire, and we're like... So they weren't on tour, I'm guessing. No, they, they are were on constantly tour. on yeah, tour. Yeah, they're, they're one of the hardest working Jeez. bands in America and right now. They are always on tour. The, the Kaiju is a beast, and if you've never seen their live show... Man, they highly recommend it. That's a hard yeah. act to follow. Bring a also, fire extinguisher and and uh, uh and, and an epipen or something. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it's a it's a beast, right? And I have a big. I think there's a really good photo that he took where everyone from inside is outside, packed out in front of the dive, and you see them holding their guitars on fire, and the the truck is on fire. And the guy wow. from Who Killed Spiky Jack is standing there in the crowd looking at it. You you like, win. That's the best. <laughs> best show story I've ever heard. Um, you, can you top that? Uh, not here. In, not of a show here in Vegas. God, dude, that just took that was such an emotional roller coaster. That took so many turns. Yeah. Oh man, that yeah. was a good show. I was Watch at out. that one too. It was a banger. Yep. Maybe the hottest show of the year. No right pun on. intended. Yeah. Right. Oh my god. Um, I if, if I was there because when I'm at a show, I'm also taking photos and videos and doing like a review video later. I wouldn't know where to put my camera. <laughs> be like, um, uh, yeah. Everybody hold still. Yeah, it was a. Yeah, I definitely want to be friendly for people taking photos, but the crowd loved it. That's crazy. Oh wow. Um. Okay. I I have no response to that. Dude, I got more. Uh, <laughs> I didn't tell you about that death match we did a couple months oh, ago. Oh my god. Yeah. Wait, death. is that the wrestlers and, and uh, one of them got like thrown on the bar? And, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's that that was crazy. But yeah. All right. I'll tell you what. <laughs> the bar has been set high already, but we're going to take a quick little break here, and um, I think I need some more booze after that. Jesus. Um, so we're going to have a quick message from future Josh. So, uh, booze break. And now, a word from our sponsors. Thanks, Past Josh. Nowadays, without a website or online presence, you'll have a hard time getting your music out there. The internet is still a powerful tool for the act, trying to grow its name recognition and... That's where having a powerful hosting and website partner like HostGator comes in. Handy. HostGator is a leading provider of shared, reseller, VPS, and dedicated hosting solutions. Award-winning support is available 24-7 via phone, email, and live chat. I've got over 9 million websites that trust them, and uh, yeah, they're pretty awesome. Just for watching this video, and for being part of Room 6, and for a limited time, you can use my affiliate link down in the description to get up to 65% off hosting and 55% off their website builder, plus free domains. Just enter the promo code GATORMODEL at checkout, and you'll be helping out the channel. Thanks to HostGator for being a sponsor, and let's get back to the show. We're back, and if that sponsor spot interested you at all, please consider clicking the link down in the description. You'll save some money, I'll get some money, it's a win-win, and I can make better videos. Now then, for those of you just joining us, what are you doing jumping in the middle of an interview? Uh, we've got... Will and Widget from Bags Productions. And we're talking uh, all sorts of interesting things about <laughs> some shows they put on. Speaking of which, what's coming up on the radar here uh, for you know, what Scumbags Production shows do they need to go to? Uh, the next one that we are going to do is going to be uh, the Run Your Luck EP release. Ooh. It's going to be at the Eagle Airy Hall. Great place. And it's going to be entirely free. Wh- wow. Yes. How many bands? Uh, at least five or six. Eagle Area is always like the most bang for the buck, no matter what you're paying for the bill. It's always just like, there's 10, okay, there's 10 bills on it, right on. We're doing stick it to those other promoters that charge 28 fucking dollars for a show. Yeah, it makes for a house me, show. Yeah, it makes me fucking <laughs> sick. Wow. So that's the reason why I'm doing it for free, because we do this for the fucking kids, you know? We don't do it for us. We don't do it to be cool. We don't do it to make money. We do this shit for the kids. And they did, 
they did it for me when I was coming up in Yuma, mm-hmm. and I'm going to continue that tradition. And I feel like a lot of these promoters are taking advantage and abusing the system. So that's why we exist, to fuck them over. <laughs> There's another tagline. Uh, we're putting together a ska show. Pick uh, it up, pick it up. Pick it up. <laughs> and it's going to be called a Pete Ska Party. No? Where could it possibly be held? Evil Pie. <laughs> Where else could it be, man? It's the original, the one. There's a, We do shows at a lot of pizza places, I'm realizing now, too. Yeah. A lot of pizza stuff, but Red Evil Lord, Pie is Evil the pie. premier pizza place, okay? That's the one I always wanted to work with because they're on Fremont, mm-hmm. you know? And that's taking it to the level that it needs to be. Great little intimate spot for a small show, too. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Well, it, somehow it, it it just fits. It works. But you're also, like, literally, there's my favorite band, and I, they're sweating on me. I'm that close. Yeah, keep in mind, I came from Humble Beginnings. I came from a small town in Yuma, mm-hmm. and we were literally just a bunch of kids getting drunk in the front yard. Now, here I am doing shows on Fremont, you know, in Las Vegas. Like, it doesn't get any yep. high stakes in that, you know? Yeah. So, that's that's what I'm talking about, and that's we're going to continue to push it. And also, it's free, you know? We're not charging money for these right. things, you know? We just want people to come out and enjoy it. Like, these ska shows can probably be $20, $30. I was gonna, yeah. Um, Medieval Pie, I feel there'd be a riot if you tried charging <laughs> entry. It's not their style. And that's I think that's the reason why we get get together so well. Like, that's why Scumbags yeah. and Evil Pie work amazingly, you know? <laughs> We're actually going to get a signature pizza there. It's going to be <laughs> Scumbags Pizza. What's yeah. going to be on it? Oh, yeah. <clears throat> well, I, I already pitched the idea to them. I don't know if they're going to go with it, but I wanted to get, like, scumbag items on that pizza. We, we discussed the combination of, uh, what was it, uh, bacon, pineapple, and mushrooms. Yeah. Dude! I mean, I've said this before. You OG Room <coughs> Sixers know this. My pizza of choice is mushroom, pineapple, and bacon bits with some barbecue drizzle on the top. Mm-hmm. And at Chiba Hut, there, there is uh, the Chiba Hut on Rainbow and Sahara. It's on the secret menu if you, if you ask for the Room Six. Oh, nice. At least, nice. at least it was for me. I don't know if any if, if anybody that works there now remembers it, but um, I'll have to check that out. I've never heard anybody say that. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm so excited. Yeah, I, I will have a scumbag's pizza slice if you if you have that make that happen. But um, you gotta have the barbecue sauce on the drizzle on the top, man. I'm sure, you, I'm sure you can ask for that. That's what we they pitched to him. We're just <coughs> waiting on a final confirmation on it. Yeah. Pineapple belongs on pizza. Yeah, I mean, pineapple and ham is all right, but pineapple and bacon? Dude, yes. Yeah, that's, that's what we're talking about. Chef's kiss. Yes. So, uh, any any other big ones they need to know about? Uh, we're also going to do a show at uh, for Punk Rock Bowling. Punk Rock Bowling pre-show kickoff. Where? Uh, it's going to be at Red Dwarf. The Another other cool. the other hot Red pizza Dwarf. place. That, pl- yeah. that was the first time I had pizza with sauce on the top. Oh yeah, yeah. They, and I, I got it, and I knew Detroit exactly. Style. I don't even like Detroit style, but their pizza is fucking Something incredible. About it, right? Yeah, it's good, man. It was just spicy enough to make you want to. It's like that's yeah, not a pizza; that's a casserole. Yeah, you know? <laughs> I remember <laughs> when I, I pass out on my pizza. I don't want to drown in it. <laughs> yes, I, 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 I'm on TikTok, um, but I, I think it's like six slices. And uh, I, I actually, I was uh, Dead Wolf was there. That was mm. my, I was meeting them in person after interviewing yeah, Tommy. Yeah, I just actually had Dead Wolf back. Actually, yeah, I did a virtual interview with Tommy, and then. They came and I, I I went down and met them and uh, also I'm friends with Algorithm and they've been on the channel mm-hmm. and that was a cool show but I remember being like hey Dead Wolf I'm full you guys and they were just that pizza was gone because they're on tour you know it's, right yeah. that's what you do we we're buying them shots of Crown Royal <laughs> getting fucked up and talking about hockey that explains so much <laughs> <laughs> that's also why they hung outside so much yeah right on um okay, go on, we got a couple more questions here and then we're gonna finish oh, I'm sorry was there any more um. Punk Rock Bowling. Oh, yeah. We're doing a pre-show kickoff at... Uh, Red Dwarf? Is, at Red Dwarf. It's going to be with the Res Tones. It's going to be a Rockabilly show. Rockabilly gig. Is that already posted online? No. Nope. Okay. No, this is, you guys are going to be the first to yet. hear it. Um, Room 6 exclusive. There you go. Uh, I will be talking about it. Um, I have a podcast on Twitch once a week on Sundays at noon. I live stream it also, but it's also recorded on the YouTube channel. Um, it's called Room 6 Radio. I basically talk about all the shows that have come up on my radar. And now acts are starting to send me flyers or, or you know, information. But I basically talk about, here's the shows that are on my flyer, are on my radar from Sunday through Saturday. And, because I can't go to them all. It's also going to be free. Just to yeah, let yeah. you know. But it, if you post it, I will be talking about it. Free show. And um, you, you can just go to Twitch, search Room 6 Radio. It'll pop up. And um, follow, please. But also, it's that's another way that I try to, like, help the scene without... 
because I'm not going to go flyering. <laughs> right. When's I the last time you went flyering? I did it for a couple weeks ago. Big shows, yeah. Yeah. Whenever I have like a really big show, yeah, I'll, I'll go out of my way to big flyers. Right. But that, that you use that like paste to slap it on. Unreleased old. released flyer in my pocket, right? Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> we, we we can't show that here, not yet. Um, right on. So, no, y- you've both been in bands, right? Or are you currently? Doing music as well? Uh, I used to play bass in a few different bands. So you were always years. busy. Yeah. And <laughs> I also spent a few years working concert tours and stuff like that. Right on. And, and did you do the music as well? No, I'm not a musician. Really? I've never been in a band. Well, thank, thank you very much for what you do. Yeah. Because um, a lot of times people get into what you're doing kind of also, as a, you know, like now I can my, my band can have gigs, you know, or, or I can at least stay. In, like, that's why I started this channel is I wanted to stay in the scene, you know, Emptying my wallet on booze and, and destroying my liver that, and that all that. That was for me once I, uh, I got nerve damage in my left hand. That's why I can't Ooh, play bass anymore. Yeah. Uh, so once I was unable to do that, I started doing the photography. And that's, you know, something that keeps me in the scene and yep. keeps me around what I love. Now I bring them to me. <laughs> right on. So we talked about um, talked about that, that favorite show memory kind of also. Um, I normally ask... Things like, you know, what's your earliest musical influence? When did you say, I want to do that? It doesn't really pertain to you. So instead, I'm going to ask you, what what was the first music you remember resonating with being like, you know, oh, this is me? Um, I don't know, man. I mean, like, I grew up with a lot of different tastes. That's why, you know, we do hip-hop shows. Because right. when I was a kid, I really was into hip-hop a lot. Uh, when I was in high school, I was into heavy metal. But it wasn't until afterwards when i started getting involved with the local scene in arizona Mm -hmm. and that's when i got to know the band drinking water and those guys used to do a lot of cool shows out in the middle of the desert you know in their little trailer like they would have a fucking double wide trailer and have like 50 kids packed all into one room when they're playing and everyone's squished together jumping up and down i felt like we were gonna fall through the fucking it was a floor. mobile house show yeah out in the that middle of the counties like there was no cops we nothing those in texas and we just bring <laughs> two 40s and just fucking party see see the the rocker in me likes that but the 51 year old in me is like yeah uh, no, it's a young man sport for sure yeah. uh we used to do shows at prison hill out there at the it was like a local park and like there was one night when uh the cops got called on to shut it down and there was a kid on top of the bathrooms they tell him to get down he gets down and the cops grab this kid and fucking slam him into the asphalt and all the kids are like fuck that shit police brutality fucking pigs start throwing rocks and bottles at the cops cops calling the SWAT team at this point like the SWAT starts coming in with the riot shields and everything and we fucking throw all our weed, throw our 40s, because a lot of us were underage at that time, so we didn't want to get caught. So if they asked us, it's like, I don't know how it got there, it wasn't mine. They had us all lined up against the wall, and they were checking our tongues for some reason to see if it was green, because for some reason, cops believe that marijuana makes your tongue green, which is not true at all. So they had to eventually start looking. <laughs> And as we started getting out, getting out of our cars and stuff like that, there's a fucking cop car that's set ablaze. Totally on fire. What is it with your shows and bl- that, fire, man? That, that ended up being it in happens. the news. Like, local punks set cop car on fire. And uh, what actually had happened was the fucking cop did it to his own car. He shot a flare in the truck. <laughs> 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 and set his shit on fire. It's on video. It's on YouTube. That's awesome. Stuff. We can't make this up. It's so amazing. This, what, what, what year was this? What, how long ago? Oh, man. This, this had was been like body cam, right? This had to have been maybe like, well, before Drinking Water came to Vegas. So maybe like 2012, 2013. So yeah, before body cams and stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah before the body cam. That'd be hilarious body cam footage. <laughs> yeah. Oh, shit. You could have covered that up. <laughs> <laughs> right on. Um, now for you, because you, you did, you know, do the music. Mm-hmm. And, and also, uh, you said we were on, worked on some tours. What is that earliest moment you remember going, I want to do that? Uh, I'd have to say probably... Man, let's see. I, I went to my first concert when I was six years old in 1982. Mm. Uh, November of 82, I saw Metallica open up for Ozzy Osbourne. It, That's a hell of a show right there. <laughs> yeah, was uh, my, my parents were recently divorced. Wait, you said 82? So this would be Randy Rhodes, right? Yeah. Yeah. And my parents were recently divorced, and my dad was trying to be the cool parent. So you know, Thanks, Dad! 
<laughs> He'd take me to shows, took me to record stores, let me buy records and stuff like that. Uh, like the first record I ever bought, I still have, was uh, Slayer's Show No Mercy. Oh, wow. Nice. Original pressing on vinyl, and I for? still have it. Yeah, I, I'll, all that goes to my kids eventually, but, right. <laughs> you know. But I, I'd say for me, what made me decide was, you know, going to those shows in an early age and seeing bands up on stage and then starting to go to smaller punk shows and stuff like that. Like when I got, I got into band, like the Misfits and Exploited like real early on, you know, and so that was what my life was. Well. It just, I wanted to be part of it from a young age and eventually learned how to play bass and. Started playing in a punk band for a while, and I played in a couple metal bands over the years, and then got into rockabilly. I was in a psychabilly band in Florida for a while. Psychabilly is a whole other level of, of oh energy. yeah, it's it's like uh, punk rock and rockabilly got together and had a fucked up flipper baby. Yeah, so. I, yeah I can remember seeing psychabilly for the first time, and I think it was the, on the same was rockabilly and psychabilly was the headliners. I don't remember. I, I can't remember the name of the act. Right, it was long ago, but it was just one of those like oh. <laughs> We've turned it up a notch, I see. All right on. Awesome. So stick around. I got one more question for them, but also we're going to see kind of like a, a highlights reel, a promo thing, show talking about some of these shows that we are, are coming up, but also some of the, the hits we've been talking about and, and more. So stick around. We're going to see kind of a promotional reel from Scumbags Productions. Last question. You made it. Yay. Cool. First off, now you have kids, you said. Mm -hmm. You have kids? No. Yeah. I have one. We, you know, learn from us. No, just kidding. Actually, I lied. I got one more question after this. How many? How many you have? Two. How do they feel about dad trying to hold on to his youth? Uh, <laughs> I haven't <laughs> talked to my daughter in a while. She lives in Florida with her mom, and me and her mom don't exactly get along. I'll, I'll, I'll say, leave it at that to be okay. nice. Uh, my son, he loves it, but he's pretty much into the same type of music I'm into and everything like that. He loves going to metal shows and punk shows and everything like right. that. And, That's just my dig every time because I'm, I'm a dad, but I don't get to go out and do music anymore. Like I, I, I get to go to shows, for Room 6, but my family has been like, we hardly see you as it is. You don't get to be in a band too, you know? Well, see, my, my son's also 26 years old. Right. You know, so, yeah. and my daughter's 18 now, so my kids are yeah. pretty much great. But I always love the reaction I get from, especially uh, dads who have like a three-year-old or whatever. Yeah. And, and they're always just like, oh! So, all right, seriously, last question. We're going to hop into Time Machine. You OG Room Sixers know what's coming. I talked about earliest musical influences a little bit, but also we talked about kind of, of that, that path that got you to where you are now. Let's pretend we can hop in a little Time Machine there and go back and ask that Younger you, we're going to talk to little you. What is one thing that you wish you could tell that, that little you? Hey, you're going to need to know this. It's going to make your life easier or, or better. And uh, don't say change your strings. <laughs> Teach the children. <laughs> don't say change your strings. It just makes me think uh, I was playing a show at Fitzgerald's in Houston one time. Mm -hmm. Middle of a song and one of the strings on my bass popped. And ah, I was going to say it, but that hurt. Yeah, it sucked. But yeah. It was funny that bass strings that. are expensive. Yeah, I had to price uh, upright bass strings for somebody once. Four hundred bucks for a set. I was like, are you crazy? Good Lord, no. <laughs> the ones I used were like six. <laughs> <laughs> but you, the sound you got out of those. Were just, well, yeah, the, the, you, uh, that's well, definitely you, you get what you pay for. But you want a really cool sound, you run an upright through a death metal distortion pedal. <laughs> You'll get a really funky. Yeah, where's sound that death clock? <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Um, but yeah, what's what's one piece of it, or let's say you, you got some some young little kid, young little punk or metalhead, and you know they're like, how do I be like you? Don't <laughs> stop fighting for what you love. Yeah, do what you love now. Yeah. Don't wait. You know, like uh, that's what I would tell myself. It's like anything is possible because I really didn't believe that I would make it as far as I have, especially from where I was because I was kind of a loner in high school. I didn't really have like a lot of friends or anything. Same. Now I have a lot of friends, a lot of fucking people who give a fuck. You know, and you're really more capable than you really believe. Just do what you want to do right now. Don't don't say, oh, I'm going to wait a year so I can get something. No, just fucking go for it, you know? Uh, and most importantly, don't let money be a motivator. Yeah. Yeah, because you'll always, you'll always be chasing it and you'll always. Yep. Yeah, don't worry don't about that. Money yeah, especially you. in a town like this. Yeah. It's a town like Vegas. It's, it's, it's hard to not let it become the reason. 
Yeah, money is just a tool, you know. Yeah. It comes and it goes. <laughs> I'm so, a tool. <laughs> yeah. So that's my family. Anyway, uh, thank you very much for watching. Thank you for being on the channel. Stick around. We're going to see that sizzle reel from Scumbags Productions. I hope to see you at a show in the future. Definitely check out Room 6 Radio Sundays at noon on Twitch, or it'll also be posted at noon on this channel. Um, I guess other than that, we'll say, uh, don't suck. Wolfpack. Wolfpack. <laughs> okay, then. Remember to be amazing, and we'll see you next time on Room 6. Say goodbye, guys. Goodbye, guys. ba da ba ba da bum Got it. We just want people to have a good time in a safe and growing music scene. We want this scene to be for everyone and to be as diverse as our members. We are scumbags of Las Vegas. Thank Will and Widget from Scumbags Productions for coming on the channel. It was a great interview and an awesome highlight reel. If you want to know more about them, I've got social media links down in the description. I hope that you'll be able to make it to one of those shows and support local music. And, uh, yeah, if you want to see more videos like this, please click up here. If you want to subscribe, click over there. You know the drill. And if you want to hear my own music, click over there. Remember to be amazing, and we'll see you next time on Room 6. And hopefully, I'll see you at Synwave on March 30th for the Room 6 Rampage March Massacre. And, uh, yeah, tickets at room6.shop. Wolfpack. <laughs>